with a lot of questions as police try to reassure them in the absence of any arrests. This park is less than a 10 minute walk from Hamilton Town Centre, which they say would have been very busy at the time she was last seen. Just the smallest detail could help them move this investigation forward. I recently came across this case and thought how disturbing that this 16 year old girl was not only victimised before her death, but also after her death. Two sets of DNA found on Amber Gibson's body would confuse investigators and make this case full of twists and turns. Come join me, Holly, at the murder she shed for this bizarre true crime story. This is the place right here in my she shed where you can get your true crime addictions fed. So make sure you hit that smash, hit that smash button, hit that subscribe, smash that subscribe button. You know, one of those going on. You know, hit it, smash it, do something with it, so I just look at it. Yeah. So, so I have more subscribers and get out into the YouTube world. Simon's excited about this, apparently. Let me give you a warning that this case is extremely disturbing. On November 26, 2021, 43-year-old Stephen Corrigan was walking through Kedsgall Glen, a wooded area in Hamilton, Lanarkshire, Scotland when he stumbled upon a body of a naked and muddy young girl. While most normal people would immediately be so horrified at what they found, they would immediately head to the police. Stephen Corrigan would instead have some really disturbing thoughts in which he acted out. He essayed 16-year-old Amber Gibson's body, not only once, but then hid her body under brush and heavy branches he had cut from a tree so he could come back for two days and continue repeatedly violating her corpse. Sick son of a gun, most definitely. Fortunately, Amber Gibson's body was found at 10 a.m. on November 28th by a police officer. The forensic pathologist who carried out the post-mortem examination on Amber's body said that she was found naked and covered in mud, with the cause of death being compression of the neck. The pathologist also found two sets of DNA on the body. So investigators wondered, did they have two suspects? Amber Gibson had a rough life from the beginning. Amber, when she was just three years old and her brother Connor was five years old, had been placed with a foster family. Amber and Connor had been repeatedly let down by the system that had been designed to actually protect them. They were taken away from a home where their dad was beating their mom black and blue every day. Their biological dad, Peter Gibson, also had been hitting them. Not long after they were taken away, Bio Dad tied and blindfolded a woman and then essayed her. He had also indecently essayed a young boy and was found guilty of lewd behavior, as well as physically assaulting and threatening that child. So there is honestly no telling what happened to Amber and Connor before they were taken out of that, their biological parents' home. Sounds like a wild, crazy place for children to have to grow up. So I'm sure they had went through a lot before they were even taken to their foster family. So needless to say, because of all that, the foster family struggled when it came to raising them. It was hard. I can't even imagine when you children that have come from such traumatic situations. And I give all foster parents praise because I can't even imagine. After Amber and Connor were put into the home of foster parents Craig and Carol Neven, Connor told Amber, we are safe now. Although Amber had experienced immense suffering, she harbored an amazing outlook on life and loved art and singing. She was the most giving and loving little girl considering her circumstances. Amber stayed with the family for over a decade before she moved into Hill House Children's Unit in Hamilton in 2009 at the age of 14. Like I said, she must have been going through a hard to raise stage. I'm not sure what happened while she moved down at the age of 14, but I guess something happened. They could no longer care for her. 
But her brother Connor stayed with the foster family until he was around 18. And he moved out in 2020. He went on to move to the Blue Triangle Homeless Project in Hamilton. After Amber started living in the Hill House Children's Unit, and while she was being looked after by social services, Amber was essayed by 20-year-old Jamie Starks at his home in Bothell in June of 2021, when she was still a minor. At the time, Stars was out on bail for another attack on a minor. Amber had been unconscious from alcohol intoxication during the attack. She had woke up in Stars' bed, a man who she had just met. She had no bottoms on, and he had been completely naked. She assumed, and they did a kid on her, and she was SI. So this poor girl that had such a rough life continued to have a rough life. Because five months after that attack, she would be found in the woods dead. Amber's brother Connor remained her only constant presence in her life, although they would often fight too. After Amber's body was found, Connor wrote on his Facebook, Amber, you will fly high for the rest of time. We will all miss you, especially me. I love you, Ginger Midget. Goodbye for now. He also invited people to leave a light on in remembrance of Amber. Connor also reached out to a local newspaper to let people know what Amber was actually like. The real Amber. Not the Amber that people saw, but the person she was on the inside. He said, I'd like them to know how she was. But one day later, Connor was arrested for the essay and murder of his little sister. The only person she ever trusted, and he let her down too. On the evening of February 26, 2021, Amber was excited because her big brother had contacted her and wanted to go meet up somewhere. They had fought two days earlier, and he wanted to make up with her. After they met, Amber sent a Snapchat to her best friend of herself with her brother, and the caption read, My Big Bro. She was so excited. As they were living together, CCTV footage captured the moment. Separate footages show Connor two hours later walking by himself at 11.42 p.m. and 11.44 p.m., having already murdered his sister. A separate video shows him trying to hide his face from passing motorists. He was also later caught on camera trying to dispose of blood-stained clothing. Amber's bra had been ripped apart and had Connor's DNA on it. A footprint found on her bra was a match to her brother's shoes. Also, his DNA was found on her jogger bottoms and underwear. Amber suffered bruising to the whites in both of her eyes, and she sustained signs of burst blood vessels to her ear, mouth, and face. There were eight separate bruises on Amber's neck with fingernail compressions, a sign of manual strangulation. Ember also suffered significant blood force trauma to her head, including a fractured nose. Ember also had bruises to both breasts, 10 injuries to her left arm, an injury to the right arm, armpit, and fingers. Ember's right leg had bruises on it and there were grazes on her back. The grazes to her back was consistent with her being pulled over a rough surface on the ground. A gray top was also damaged around the neck and a pair of jogging bottoms were covered in mud with signs that she had been dragged, with proof that she had been. Connor denied any involvement in Amber's death. He told police he last saw his sister after she walked off from an argument near a community center in Hamilton on the day she had died. Connor's phone, though, showed he texted Amber's phone after killing her, saying, Are you okay? in order to try to cover his butt. He also made an internet search how to get nosy police officers to stop monitoring your phone. After Connor had brutally beat his sister, S.I. had strangled her, disposed of her clothes and some of his clothes that had blood on them. He returned to the housing project where the night shift worker was in her office. She said when Connor showed up around midnight, he slumped in his chair. She noticed he had dirty hands all the way to the wrist. There were dirt on his shoes. There was a cut on his left shin. He complained that there were stings on his arms like scratches. She asked if he was okay, but he didn't answer her. He just hung his head in shame. The last person Amber saw was the brother she had trusted, strangling her to death. In less than six months, a third man would victimize her, but this man would do that after her death. This brings us back to the almost 50-year-old man, Stephen Corgan. 
who found this little girl's body. Corrigan's 79-year-old father gave him an alibi, saying on November 26, he drove his son to get a COVID booster shot. He said his son stayed at his house that evening after feeling unwell from the vaccine. His dad also said his son was at his home and in bed in agony on the Saturday evening. He then said his son probably went upstairs to play video games because he was in agony. And that's the thing to do when you're in agony, I guess. But he wasn't sure if that definitely occurred. He also said he stayed with him the night of Sunday, November 27th, and slept till after 11 p.m. on the Monday, which has happened to be around an hour after officers had found Amber's body. Forensic investigators found Corgan's DNA on 39 areas of Amber's body, her breasts, buttocks, thighs, and pubic area. According to forensics, this disgusting man had essayed this little girl after her death and then hit her body so he could continue to do so. He was never going to tell authorities he had found Amber because he was taking care of his own sick, disturbing fantasies. This little girl had a horrible life and then couldn't even be allowed to die peacefully. I'm sorry, but this sick monster needs to go straight to hell. Amber Gibson, I hope you are finally resting in peace, sweet girl. It breaks my heart that this little girl never had much of a life. Just so sad what some children are born into and have to endure. I wish I knew the answer on how to help all these little children that I often discuss on my channel. But as long as evil exists, and apparently it always will, then the children that are born of monsters will suffer. I know, that's an awful way to end. But it's sad that Amber never got a life. It's sad that Amber was never able to graduate from high school, walk down the aisle when she got married. Good father that actually walked her down the aisle. It's sad that she didn't get to go to college, have a career, and live a wonderful life. As she aged and came older, just enjoyed life. Her whole life was nothing but misery. She was victimized by one man after another. So sad that she had to endure all this in her short little life. Breaks my heart for all children that suffer through things like this. I wish there was answers of what to do. Foster families are amazing. And I think you're amazing if you're out there fostering children. It's an amazing thing. It's hard work, I'm sure. Never done it. I would have. My husband did not want to. You know, when you got another spouse that doesn't want to do something like that. My children are now grown. I would have done it. But he was ready just for us to be us. If that's what he wanted, I'm going to abide by that. But, you know, I think it's great if a couple agrees and they both want to do that. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll end this with bloopers because I don't want to end this sad for you guys. There's plenty of Simon bloopers on this one. He wasn't always laying here acting nice. See what I mean? He wasn't always acting nice. He don't always be good boy, but he's going to tell y'all bye now, and he loves y'all. He loves y'all so much, don't you? Mm. Max loves you too. Max is up here too. They both love you. See you later. Bye. What up? What up? Welcome to the Murder She Shed, where you can get all your true crime addictions fed. My name is Holly. I thought cheese heads going on around here. I don't even have a Dr. Pepper today. How's life fair? I've seen it fair today. I always start a video and something breaks. That's how it is in redneck world. Never have nothing that works. It's a beautiful boy. It's a beautiful boy. You see me? He's just going to lay here with his nose up in there. Here we go. We're going to try this. We're going to try it, really. See, look, he's a big baby. You got a baby like this at your house? Little Samo, little Samo, he's a beautiful baby. Come join me and Simon at the Murder She Shop for this bizarre true crime story. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up with Simon and all my cases right here in the Murder She Shed. He's moving the whole bed, and I apologize. Let me give you a warning. This case is totally disturbing. Disturbing. You're really going to lay here like a baby. <laughs> this may make it awkward to film. <laughs> you're such a weirdo. You're such a weirdo. I love you, but you're a weirdo. You're weird as they come. <laughs>
Thank you, boy. Here's the other one sticking his nose up here. This is going to be hard to film today. I have a feeling this is not working. I got to finish this story. Whether you like it or not, it's happening. Whether you want it to go on or not, it's happening. Hey, I got red. We're on one side. Look, yeah. what are you doing? Don't eat my lipstick. Boy, you must be it. You have an attitude today. You have an Oh, there goes my mic. Holy freaking cow. This is not working out for the best today. Life of being a dog mom. I recently came across. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. You're not listening. Lay down. Lay down. Lay down. There you go. I love the chase and the hunt and I set the pace when I'm running I always take what I want and I always give it 100 Don't need a bank, no I'm funded Play the game like it's nothing I'm